Ah, oh, there she is. My table saw. And I really like it. Well, mostly. Isn't it funny how projects just go a lot better when you get everything straight and square at the beginning? Well, that's what attracted me to the Charnwood saws, with their sliding carriage, crosscut, arm, extension thing. I seem to spend a lot of time just fiddling around with it, and then eventually just stop using it altogether. And that was about two years ago. This is what it should look like, but I had this idea that I could build something a bit different that would work for me. The sled has these four dog holes, and I knew that if I could build something that dropped straight in there with no play, then I wouldn't have to do any adjustment. I found this wood dowel pole thingy, but it fitted the 19mm dog holes perfectly. But before I started making that, I started getting obsessed about making sure everything was square. So I started off checking the mitre tracks with the side of the table, and then making sure the side of the table was square to the blade, and thankfully everything was spot on. The track that the sled rides on was not so spot on though. So I loosened the bolts, I got two blocks of wood, and once I was happy with the position I got it into, I used some clamps to hold it before doing the bolts back up and then checking to make sure that it was all square afterwards. I spent a bit of time doing this because I intend to use this jig for cross cutting panels up to 600mm wide and if it's out just by a little bit across the span of 600mm it's going to be out by quite a bit. So if I get this bit right then we should be golden. Okay, so it's on to making the jig. I cut a panel that was 500mm by 600mm. The idea is when it's fitted later, we can snip the end off with the blade to give us a zero clearance. Here comes the standard YouTube track saw camera angle. ka -ching. That's YouTube gold, right there. Okay, so in order to get this into the right place, I took the existing sled, flipped it over, moved it into position. I used a 19mm force and a bit to tap down with a hammer and find the centre of each hole. I moved over to the drill press next to create a hole about 6mm deep with the same force and a bit. This is just to make sure the dowel seat is square. I then drilled the centre of each of these through to the other side, flipped the board over and then used a countersink bit. So this is me marking what I thought was the perfect height for each of the dowels. It turned out later on that these actually caught on a bolt on the table saw and I had to trim it back a few times later on. But hey, nobody will know that. Then it was time to fix the dowels in place and give everything a good sanding. It's worth saying at this point that I do really like my table saw and I like Charmwood. I've got quite a lot of their machines in my workshop. But I'm also really impatient and I don't like spending a lot of time setting machines up. So I needed something that would just drop straight into the table saw and I knew it was square each time and then I could lift it out and hang it up. And that was really the idea of this project.
I then rounded over each of the two bottom corners because this is where my legs were going to be when I would be using the table saw so I didn't want to be catching anything and I also just like rounding over corners So now it's time to start working on the fence for this jig. I grabbed some poplar or tulip wood, if you like, and moved over to milling it into square. You can see from this shot that there's certain places in my workshop where the light kind of works, and then there's certain places where it really kind of doesn't. I had to use a lot of editing on this to get the color to come out. So I think my next video is going to be some funky filming lights that I can move around the workshop and then pack up and fold away. I think it's fair to say that my woodwork is a real product of YouTube and I like the idea of giving something back. So I really want to try and get maybe three or four videos out a month. So if you like this, or you want to see more, please like, subscribe, share. Thanks. So here I'm just tidying up the ends, and then measuring and cutting to size. I decided to go at 900mm, although the sled's only 600mm wide, I like the idea of having that extra capacity for the stop block, just for those longer cuts. At this point I also checked all the size and made a decision on which ones would be the face and the top. Here I'm just creating a chamfer on the bottom of the face side. This is so when I'm using it and dust inevitably gets in there, you can still get a positive reference and make sure it doesn't take it out of square. I then drilled two holes through the top of the fence and I picked locations that I thought wouldn't interfere with anything else. I used a drill bit, positioned it onto the bottom of the sled and just tapped down to find the centre point. I drilled these all the way through the board in what now looks like quite an aggressive action and used a forstner bit on the underside to create a little recess. I dropped a washer in and then placed a bolt in each side. This would later have a screw handle that fits on the top to give me adjustment. Here I'm just adjusting a straight bit on my router table to get the perfect depth for some T-track. As soon as I turned the camera off, I then realised it was utter suicide to try and do this cut in one pass, dropped the blade back down and started sneaking up on the cut point. I didn't route this channel all the way through the fence because this end of it will come into contact with the blade and I only need the stop block to start at about 100mm out due to my close attachment to my fingers. I used a chisel just to square off the rounded end that the router had left. You don't have to do this, but you know, it looks nice. I cut the T-track to length and at this point I gave everything a lick of paint because, well, I like it. So we just about had everything we needed now to start putting things together. So I fixed the T-track into the fence really quickly and then I did one last check to make sure the blade was at 90 degrees to the bed of the table and then it was time for a test fit. I was actually really surprised how easily it dropped in and how little movement there was. Then I ran it over the blade to establish the cut line, taking extra care not to damage the paintwork. I mean, this is a workshop project. Then I put the fence together and checked everything was square. 
Notice how I got safety glasses on doing this, but I didn't have one to use the table saw. It's a bit weird. Then it was time to add some bling. The world's smallest stop block and do one last pass over the blade to line up the fence. So you might have heard of the five cut method for working out if something's square. I call this the five minus four method. You take a board that you already know to be square. You then think about cutting four sides off of it as you turn it around. And then you remember this stuff ain't cheap, so you just cut one off. You then check both sides of the off cut with your 99p tape measure. And if they're the same, then jobs are good. I really enjoyed this project. I think mainly because I didn't hurt myself. I didn't damage the camera or upset the neighbours. See you soon.